average humans can look into the future. And this is without a doubt, like beyond Six Sigma proof, which is science's gold standard of this is a phenomena. And it's either cute or ugly that they flash before it. Now, if it's cute, you'll select cute faster. It still affects their speed at which they make the choice, which means they're looking Holy into the shit. future. So hold on, hold on. So <laughs> we talked on the break a little bit about going into the future, looking into the future, but it's Right now, from, from what we've discussed thus far, everything to include Joe McMonagle, all of the remote viewing stuff that we've talked, well, I guess not. The, the space station that crashed, that would have been in the future. Yeah. But most of what we're talking about is actually in the present. What is this diagnosis that's happening? That What is the pain this woman's feeling in yeah. her knee? Yeah. You know, what is the picture in the envelope yeah and so but also remote viewing is also looking into the future yeah and there's actually a really cool study that was done because i mean there's so many people out there listening right now who are saying oh this is complete bullshit and there are a lot of scientists out there who are like okay well you know show me a peer-reviewed published study that shows that this stuff can occur and you know even with a joe mcmonagle the argument is n equals one isn't really proof of anything like one guy might have amazing abilities for whatever reason to get it to the bottom of this we need to study it a lot more and it doesn't even prove that more than one person has this there was actually a really cool study that i want to tell you about that proves that average humans can look into the future and this is without a doubt, like beyond Six Sigma proof, which is science's gold standard of this is a phenomena, that type of statistical proof that human beings can literally look into the future. And it was on an ironclad study that even the most vehement skeptics weren't able to poke any holes in. And it started with a, uh, a study that was done on what's called priming. So they put a bunch of people in a chair in front of a computer system. And the computer ran the whole experiment, randomized the whole thing, selected out of a database, grabbed images and words that were connected um, with a study that they wanted to do regarding putting a picture of, let's say, a, a kitty in front of somebody. And so they show you this picture of this kitty on the screen, and then a few seconds later, they give you the option to select cute or ugly, binary choice. So you press button one or button two, and then they measure you, because it's a computer, they can measure down to the split second, a hundredth of a second, um, how fast you're selecting your word associated with the image. But then they make it complicated one step further. For one thirtieth of a second, before they even show you the picture of the kitty, randomly selected of the two words, they will flash one of the words in front of you that your conscious awareness can't pick up because we can't see one thirtieth of a second, but the subconscious does pick it up. So your subconscious mind sees the one thirtieth of a flash of the word right before they show you the kitty. And it's either cute or ugly that they flash before it. Now if it's cute, you'll select cute faster. If you think kitties are cute, you might hate kitties, I don't know. You might say, all cats are ugly, right? Um, they control for all that, but basically if they flash ugly before the kitty, then it will take you a split second longer to select cute. And this is a, a perfect study because there's no study investigator and in human interaction, so they can't, there's no human to human interface interaction that can occur there to where you're skewing the results. There's no clue about what the selection needs to be from any other source. It's just a computer running the, the experiment. So this is a, from a psychological sciences perspective, this is a perfect study because it's only a human being being measured by a computer with a completely randomized set of data that's being placed in front of the human and measuring how fast they can react to something based on a stimuli that they put right before the whole process goes through. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I, help me understand how this is looking into the future. Okay. This next study switches okay. it around. <clears throat> so this next researcher who wanted to investigate whether or not this primer had any inf influence on these people in the future, he took the primer from over here at the beginning of the process and he simply put it over here at the end of the process. So then the new experiment became... I'm going to show you a picture of a kitty or whatever, and then I'm going to give you two words, and then at the end, in that 1 30th of a second flash, 
after you have already made your choice, after you've already pressed your button and made your decision, we're going to flash the primer afterwards. So there should be absolutely no way, if you're looking at the picture, selecting your word, and then getting a primer afterwards, that that primer should influence the speed at which you make your decision and, and click your button on whichever you know, word you want to choose, right? Should have absolutely no effect, except it did. The primer flashed after your decision altered the timing in which you could select the cute or ugly uh, word choice in the same way that it did when you put it before. And not only did it occur, it occurred in 90 different experiments in 33 different independent labs in 14 different countries to over a six uh, sigma signi significance, statistical significance. So they basically proved in that set of studies, <clears throat> in this meta study that's, proved, that's uh, published at National Institutes of Health, by the way, on the website, that humans, the consciousness of humans, like they don't do this consciously, but something in their subconscious looks into the future, sees that primer, and it affects the speed at which they can select cute or ugly based on the image that they've been given, and yet the primer happens after the fact that they've taken the choice. It still affects their speed at which they make the choice, which means they're looking Holy into the shit. future. So hold on, hold on. So, <laughs> so with no prompt, yeah. what are we calling it, a prompt? A primer. A primer with no primer on the front or the back. Well, they have one on the front or the back. The first set of experiments was on the front. Okay. And it affected people as they expected it to. Mm -hmm. But they put it on the back, and they didn't expect it to affect people, and then it did. But the constant would be without a primer, correct? They, they have control they... groups that were without a primer. Yeah, they That's had a, what I meant. <clears throat> yeah, they had bo both experiments had a control group where they didn't have a primer. So if the primer on the back end... You have one without it, one with it. You're faster with the one on the back end. And it and the primer happens after the decision has been made. Yeah. In the congruent way that the primer would want to influence you if it was put in the front, the same type of results happen when they put it on the back. And that proved that and that proved that basically consciousness was tied into non-locality, the quantum mechanics, right? Because quantum mechanics is something that is independent of, of space and time. It's not affected by time. So what that's proving to us, or what that's suggesting to us, not proving, proving is a very strong word. What that's suggesting to us is that consciousness can reach into the future and see a future bit of data and influence your decision in the now. 90 studies proved it. Wow. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.